Hi, this is Tutor Lee. Now let's do the third chapter, which is orthographic projection in the class for introduction to drafting and design. Now what we are going to learn over here are different objectives. Some of them are first angle and third angle projection. How to identify and how to draw using first angle and third angle projection. Identify the symbol that's used in the first and the third angle projection. Then we will see what six principal views of a projection are then sketching and drawing orthographic views. We'll understand what folding lines and miter lines are and what are they used for. How we transfer dimension between views. We look into the precedence of lines. Understand what are normal, inclined and oblique surfaces then we are going to compare the CAD drawing and hand drawing as to which is more efficient, which is better and just compare between those two. Finally, we'll be doing orthographic projection exercises where we are going to look into 3D objects and make orthographic projections of that object. Lastly, we have questions and answers. So let's look into first what is a projection. Projection is a view of an object. By projecting multiple views from different directions in a systematic way you can completely describe the shape of a 3D object. Now for example, this is a 3D object that you see over here and you are projecting this 3D object from different directions. For example, this is the top view as in you are looking top going down in this direction. Then you have the front view looking this way that gives you the front view and then you have the side view which is looking this way in this direction and that gives you this view. So why do we need to have orthographic projections and why not just have a 3D and use that for manufacturing? Why not just make one 3D model and have that for manufacturing. Now there are quite a few different reasons for doing that. One of the reasons is when you're doing a, a 3D model, for example the line behind this over here, behind this object, you cannot see. Even dimensioning becomes a problem. So the only reason why we use a 3D view now this view is an isometric view which we will be learning later on in the other chapters as to how to draw isometric views. So this is mainly used for presentation and for understanding. But for any part to be manufactured, you have to have the orthographic views. They are even called multi-views because there are more than one views. So keep that in mind. Now while working with orthographic views, we are going to follow all the different methods and standards for dimensioning for the different line types that you see over here. For the center, you have a different line type. For the hidden line, you have a different line type. You dimension in a certain way, like an architecture drawing will be dimensioned in a different way than an engineering drawing. So we'll be learning more standards as we proceed to the dimension chapter later on. So, along with following the different 
standards that's used in the practice, you must also know in order to create drawings that can be accurately interpreted, you need to know which view to show. You need to know how they should be oriented in your drawing and how to represent key information such as edges, surfaces, vertices, hidden lines, center lines and other crucial details. The standard published in ANSI slash ASME Y14 3M 1994 is a common standard that's used in United States where we use the third angle projection while countries like Europe and Asia they use the first angle projection. Now this drawing that you have over here has used an example of first angle projection. Sorry, this use this view is using the third angle projection. The first angle projection would be a total opposite of this one. Now let's see what are the six principal views. Now looking at just this example over here the six principal views over here will be, if I'm looking from top, that would be the top view. If I'm looking from this direction, that would be called as the rear view. If I'm looking from this direction, this will be called as the right side view. If I'm looking from that direction, looking this way, it will be called as the left side view. And if I'm looking this direction this will be called as the front view and if I'm looking from down or the bottom looking up to the object then that will be called as the bottom view so these are the six principal views namely the top rear right side left side front and the bottom now it is up to you to decide which view is the front view or which view is the side view. So in this case I could decide this to be the front view and I could decide this to be the side view or the other way. I could consider this to be my front and this to be the side. It really doesn't make any difference because you will still have all the details that you need in all the different views that you are selecting. Now that we know we have six different views, another thing to remember is you're not going to put all the six different views on your drawing sheet unless there is something that you need to show like a, a more detail that you cannot view in any of these views. For example, there's a certain dimension in this view and uh, I cannot see this dimension in any other view so maybe I might have to draw that extra view but if you look in this drawing these three views explain how to manufacture this drawing in detail so if I'm looking this way this is my front view and if I'm looking from that direction which is my back view the view is identical. Only thing is the view is going to be reversed. So do I have to draw that view again? I don't. So you have to understand which views to draw and which views not to draw. So you are even picking different views over here. Now the next thing we need to know is the principal dimensions. Now there are three principal dimensions that an object has, a three-dimensional object has. One is the height, the second one is the width, and the third one is the depth. So to manufacture this part, I need to know the sizes and the three principal dimensions. 
Now, if you look for the height, it starts from the base till the maximum that you see over here. So the height of this object is from the top till the bottom. That's the maximum height. Now, when we are talking about the depth, the depth is from this side till all the way till the depth of the object till behind. Or if you see, it starts over here and ends right here. So that's the total depth of this object. And you can show that in the view. Like if you look in the view over here, the total depth is 2.5. The total height, which can be shown in this view, is 1.75. Now, what is the width of the object. Now the width starts from here and ends all the way at the tip of this. So if you look, the width will start right here and end all the way over here. So that is the total width of the object. This is the height of the object and the depth is seen in the top view which is 2.5. So I hope you understood how these three principal dimensions are extremely important to be shown in your drawing for manufacturing. Now let's see what are folding lines and miter lines. Now if you look in this example over here, I have an object. now. I have three different orthographic views, which is the top view. This is how the object looks from the top. This is how the object looks from the front. And this is how the object looks from the side. Now, to get the, to transfer the heights and the width and the dimension, I could use something called as the folding lines. And then I project it using a miter line which is at an angle of 45. So how am I going to go about it? First thing I have to make sure I have enough distances between my views. So this is the front view and this is the top view. So make sure you have enough distance so the object and dimension can fit inside that space. And then again you take the same distance from the edge of the object till the other object. And all you have to do is make a 45 line called as the miter line and then you are going to project these lines. Like for example, if I want to do the same thing or I will just draw really quick over here. I have this object. this object right here and it has one hole there and it has a niche over here. So this is the top view of my object. Now if I wanted to draw the front view one of the things I would be doing is use my folding lines and project it. Now, if I project it, I am getting the width of the object, which is from here till here. I can even get the location for the center of the circle. And I can even project it on the side over here. Let me just match the attributes just to make sure that these are fold these are folding lines or projection lines. Now again I'm going to project it from here, from the center. Then from the edge and then from this edge. So now what I have is my projection lines. Let me complete my front view. So I know my front view is going to fit in this much area. So I start from 
here and I need to know the height now with respect to my drawing I know my height is going to be this high what's happening over here this is a circle so is it going all the way up is it a hole what's happening so now that's the reason why you need more views you understand what I'm saying because in the top view we don't know if this is a hole or this is a cylinder that is protruding out of this plate so the object was something like this and I'm just using my projection lines to project my object so now the object is going to start taking shape and basically this plate you see over here is this plate and then the circle is going to be from here till here then I will have to trim these out now we're gonna do a lot more examples so uh, don't worry even if you don't follow this because I'm going to work with 3d and uh, make a 3d model and then from there we are going to see how the projection works so I already have these projected from the top view I got even my front view now how do I get my side view now for the side view what I can do is make something like a miter line from here going at an angle of 45 okay so now how is this miter line going to help transfer the depth and the heights all I want to do over here is make this view but I don't want to go through dimensioning and drafting the whole thing so that's why I'm using this line now see what I do so I'm going to go here and uh, I will make this uh, layer current and all I'm doing is projecting my lines to get my side view so from here I got the height but I need to get the width and this is the whole or sorry the depth so how do I get the depth I know it's from here till here so I'm going to transfer it down from the miter line going this way transfer going that way so now I know my side view is going to fit in this much area right so I'm going to make my object where I start with the base which is right here and all I need to do is when I'm looking in this direction I have a cylinder and this cylinder is coming over here and it's in the center of my plate so I can even copy that because it's a cylinder right there so this is my side view the only thing that I am missing is this niche so for the niche all I have is a line over here that I was missing and when this gets projected right there is coming down from here so that's another line so this is my top view this is my front view and this is my side view so using the folding lines and the miter line I can achieve this view without even using a scale to dimension because I get the the depth from the top view and the width and the height from the front view so you see how the miter and folding lines help me draw this view over here now I could even delete them because in my drawing I don't show these miter lines and folding lines they are used as a technique just 
to draw more efficiently and to transfer the different dimensions. So what is the main difference between the third angle projection and the first angle projection? This example as I told you is third angle projection where you have a top view on the top that's how you can remember then you have a front view and a side view now this is used in United States and Canada but if you are uh, working on a project in Asia uh, or Europe then you are going to use the third angle projection now the difference between the first and the third angle projection is basically the first angle projection is a mirror image of the third angle projection. So in the first angle projection my top view would be let me just copy this on the side so in the first angle projection the top view will be down here and the front view and the side view uh, front view would be on the top and the side view would be on this side so that's your first angle projection that's the only difference it's the only difference that the views are placed in a mirror image there is no other dif difference the dimensioning remains the same uh, the sizes remain the same only thing is the way you set the the orthographic views on your sheet is a mirror image again this is the first angle projection and to make this a third angle projection all I have to do is the top view goes on the top and the side view goes on this side now what we have over here is a third angle projection so now you understand what's the difference between the third and the first angle projection again it's just how the drawing is placed or how the views are placed on your drawing sheet now let's see how to draw the symbol for the first and the third angle projection. The symbol for the first angle projection is drawn just like this. Just going to make a reference line. Just a cone. So this is your symbol for the first angle projection. How do you remember it? Is the angle comes first. Now, if it is a third angle projection, how is the symbol going to look? It's just going to be a mirror image. So I can always mirror that. And this is the symbol of your third angle projection that we use over here in the United States. So, uh, main thing you have to remember is between the first and third angle projection, the difference is the first angle is a mirror image of the third angle projection. There is no other difference. There is no other complications. It's just how they are set up on your sheet. Now let's look into what is precedence of lines. So I'm going to go back to the same drawing. Just modify it a little bit. I'm going to move this little niche right there so it's lining with the hidden line 
So basically, that falls right here. No, it doesn't fall right there. Maybe this goes. This goes up here. So now what's happening over here is the hidden line is in the same line as the solid line. So which one should I show first? Which one should be shown in my view? Should the hidden line take precedence over the visible solid line or should the solid line be shown over here so which one has more importance with respect to your view now over here we should know that the solid lines or the solid edges take precedence over the hidden lines so always the solid line will be shown first now the way which we had before in here they were not in the same line so we didn't have that problem when it comes to this view because we could show both but when both of them are in the same line which one should I show should I show the hidden or should I show the solid so now you already know the answer if both of them are in the same line it should look like what is looking right now over here the solid line or the the line that you see in the view takes precedence. Now the next one is what if the hidden line is coinciding with the center line? What is going to take precedence? So we have to remember if we have a center line and a hidden line that are overlapping in a certain location then the hidden line takes precedence over the center line so the first more important line is the line that you see which is the solid line after that is the hidden line which has precedence and lastly it is the center line now we are going to do more examples where uh, I will show you uh, all this in a 3D object. First I'm going to model a 3D object and then we are going to look into the different multi views. Before we get into more precedence of lines and more examples we have to understand what are normal surfaces, inclined surfaces and oblique surfaces. So what you see over here is a box where you have normal surfaces that you see over here, which is the top, the side, the front. Now normal meaning they are all at 90 degrees to each other. Now I want to see what is an inclined surface. So to do the inclined surface, what I'm going to do is click on that line. Now what you got over here is this is the inclined surface. Now what's the difference between the normal surfaces and the inclined surfaces? The inclined surface is at a different angle than 90 degrees. So if you see over here, this is a normal surface, this is a normal surface, this is a normal surface, and the only inclined surface that you have is this one. So if I look it in a, a front view and the side view, see the side view shows you the inclined surface. Now this surface, this surface, this surface, and this surface is all normal surfaces. The only inclined surface is right there. Now then what is an oblique surface? An oblique surface is tipped 
to all principal planes of projection and since it is not perpendicular to any projection plane it cannot appear on edge in any standard view since it is, it is not parallel to any projection plane it cannot appear in the true size so now let's convert the same one into an oblique surface so now you see what happens over here this is the only oblique surface in this 3D drawing this is a normal surface this is the inclined surface this is the normal surface normal surface and the only surface that is oblique is this one now why is it oblique because in none of the views you would get the correct size like if I try to measure this size from here till here I'm not going to get the exact size in this view will I get the exact size in another view I don't get the exact size neither in this view it looks like it has shrunk so the actual size cannot be shown in any of the six principal views and this is the surface and this is called as the oblique surface now when we were talking about the inclined surface can we get the exact size in any of the principal views in this view if I measure the height of this inclined surface it is not exactly if I would have measured this you see this thing looks a lot more bigger and if I do that it looks like it has shrunk and this is called as foreshortening if I look in this view again I cannot get the right exact size so for getting the right size of this inclined view I have to make another view looking down perpendicular to this surface and that is called as an auxiliary view which we will be covering on later in the auxiliary view chapter so I hope you understood what is the difference between the normal surface the inclined surface and the oblique surface now the next thing that we would like to see is compare the CAD drawing to the hand drawing why do we use CAD and why not just hand drawing now there are so many different reasons why we use CAD rather than hand drawing but that doesn't mean that you would never use any hand drawing why because if for some reason you are on the site or with a client and the client doesn't understand something or the contractor doesn't understand a specific detail now you are not going to open your computer on site and then draw a three-dimensional model and then show it to him for that you have to sketch it really quick so you are going to do a hand sketch within like 30 seconds maybe draw an isometric view and make them understand or if you are in a meeting and you have a client and he doesn't understand something then you have to sketch or hand draw something really quick so they understand what this object looks like so hand drawing is still extremely important as an engineer as a designer as an architect but when it comes to detailed construction documents or comes to detailed 
engineering drawings then the best and the fastest way is to use CAD now when you are using CAD you can easily modify the dimensions the sizes the drawing by just a click of a button now if you were to draw or hand draw this whole drawing in this whole view then you would have to take an eraser and erase it and obviously that takes a lot of time now if I were to just modify something or make changes or add to it obviously computer is the most efficient for example, if I wanted to make a duplicate of this drawing, I could just use the copy command and click and I already have another copy. But just imagine if I were to do this by hand, it would take me a lot of time. If I were to modify something, my client says, oh, this part looks uh, small. I want you to stretch it out. Now, with AutoCAD it took me two seconds if I were to use my hand drawing and modify it I had to erase it and I had to fix it and I have to remeasure it so that takes way too much time so there are thousands of different reasons why a CAD drawing is better than a hand drawing now 20 years ago we didn't have AutoCAD means we did have it but not many people had access to it because they didn't have computers and um, they didn't have the program and it was very very basic so all the engineers and designers and architects they used hand drawing they had a drafting board a slider a t-scale uh, measuring scales and instruments to draw any drawing but it's not the case right now right now if you go work anywhere everything is pretty much drawn using CAD now again there are so many different CAD programs but the most prominent and the most used is AutoCAD so that's some of the comparison between a CAD drawing and a hand drawing now let's get into more of the orthographic projection exercises so what I will be doing is using a program where I will draw a 3d object and then show you how to make different multi views of that object for example we already have this shape if I just with a click of a button right now I have the top view just with a click of the button I have the side view and all the views that you could ever want front view I could get the bottom view and even a 3d view just by click of a button so the program that we have I have over here that I am currently using is Autodesk Inventor now what the program does is you model the whole object in 3d and once the object is modeled just by a click of a button you can get all the desired views that you would need and even this program helps me with so many different options as to I could view it in different wireframe I could view it as a wireframe with hidden edges you see I can see the hidden edges over here I could do the wireframe with just visible edges I could even use a realistic rendering so these programs have advanced in so many years so when if you are going into CAD you have to know uh, AutoCAD which is which does 2d as well as 3d but the 3d is not as powerful as inventor 
or 3D Max or other 3D programs. So as a designer, as an engineer, you will have to know at least one two-dimensional program which you can use which is AutoCAD and one a three-dimensional program. If you are more into mechanical drawings and mechanical engineering then you would use either uh, Inventor or you could even use SolidWorks. If you are more in construction or architecture drawings then the 3D program you would be using is Revit or 3D Studio Max. So you have to remember Inventor and SolidWorks is mostly used for mechanical and engineering drawings. On the other hand, Revit 3D Studio Max would be used for architecture and construction drawings. Now, this 3D program helps me modify objects really quick. For example, I want to make a hole on this surface or I want to put a cylinder right there and I could do that just by using a few different tools. Now I already created the circle on top of that surface and I could modify it as I could click on it and I could create a cylinder on top. I could even make a hole if I want it just by a few clicks. And now you see what happened over there. I already have a hole in the top surface. I could go look in the top view. I could go look it in the side view, back view, right view, top view, and front view. Now I want to see what's behind of it. I could always go and change the view into different modes, different visual styles. Like for example, I see the hidden lines over there. If you click on it, you see, you see the hidden lines for the cylinder. You see the hidden lines that are behind. So this thing does most of the job. Now once I'm done modeling my 3D object, I could even export it into a file format. Now I will be showing you a lot more in detail when I start my lectures on Autodesk Inventor. Now using this uh, same Inventor program I could even go and insert my 3D drawing into here and then just project my views just by a click of the button. Now what I have over here is the top view, I have the front view and the side view. So you now you see how efficient this program uh, this program is when it comes to drawing all these views. So once you have a 3D view, just three clicks and you have your different views placed onto your sheet the way that you want. Let's do some more exercises where we are going to make a 3D object and we are going to look how it uh, how we can draw that or how it looks like in different orthographic views. So I'm going to create some new drawings. I start with maybe just the profile where I create the profile in one of the views. Now this thing looks like some steps. Now all I have to do 
is give it a depth just by a click of a button. So now I have created a 3D of some steps. Now I want to see how this would look like in the top view, in the front view, in the side view. All I have to do is just click. Now this is the right side view. Now for the front view which I said, what surfaces do you see in the front view? You see this surface, then you see this surface, and you see this surface. So you're seeing just three surfaces. In the right side view, you're just seeing one surface which is right here. So while working with orthographic views, you have to visualize. Is there anything else I'm going to see? Am I going to see this surface in my right side view? Do you, what do you think? Are you going to see this surface or this surface or this surface when I'm in the right side view? You are not. And why are you not going to see it? Because these surfaces are normal surfaces. As in, they are perpendicular to each other. So if I'm looking from this direction, all I see is this surface. And I don't see this one, this one, this one, this one, or even this one. Why? Because it's behind. If these were at a different angle, then yeah, I would be able to see something from this view. But this particular model has all normal surfaces. So when I'm going to look from the front view, I'm going to see